All right, welcome everybody to Northern Now, the digital event series presented by Alumni Relations for Alumni and Friends. My name is Kylie Bunting. I am the Director of Alumni and Foundation Communications here at NMU, and I'm really excited that you have joined us for this special event tonight. Um, we're really excited to continue this series and uh, give Coach Shane a big Wildcat welcome back to campus. Uh, first, I just wanna talk about a couple of logistics. So we are unable to see uh, or hear you during this webinar format, but we certainly want to hear from you. So please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen to ask questions for our panelists. And you can also chat with your fellow Wildcats tuning in by using the chat function as well. Please note that the chat is defaulted to sending messages to hosts and panelists only. Make sure you change that to everybody so everyone can see what you're saying and you can chat with other people tuning in. Just talking about a couple of upcoming events out of our office, and a reunion for all NMU hockey alumni will take place in Marquette this August, the weekend of August 4th. You can find out more information on our website. You can also join us for NMU alumni night at the Wisconsin Timber, Timber Rattlers game coming up on August 12th. And then save the date for NMU Homecoming 2023, which will be September 15th through se September 16th. Uh, you can visit our website, nmu.edu slash alumni for all information on everything coming up. And of course, follow us on social media and uh, you can keep up with all the great things that our alumni are doing and um, also some upcoming events and ways that you can stay connected with your alma mater. And now I'm really excited to turn tonight's program over to former Wildcat football player and current NFL analyst and show host, Steve Mariucci. Welcome, Steve. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, Kylie, thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. I guess there's well over 200 guys, all football fans here that are on this webinar, and that's fantastic. So I hope we get some awesome questions for you three guys, all right? And, uh, you know, this is... Um, I should say, um, welcome to our weekly Shane Richardson webinar. That's what you said last night. You wanted to do this every week, didn't you, Shane? Every week, Coach. Every We're week, gonna, and, yeah. and, and, and Rick said yes, and, and uh, of course, Robert Sala said absolutely. Uh, so we'll do this more often. Thanks for coming, guys. This is, this is terrific. So the purpose of tonight's webinar, okay, we want to get uh, the alumni familiar with Shane Richardson, and more familiar with where the program now is headed. Uh, we, we know where it's been and uh, we wanna know where, uh, where it's headed and, and how are things going, Shane, that sort of thing. And, uh, and, it, and it's great to have Rick with us too because Rick now is the AD and hired Shane. We'll talk about that. And of course, Robert Sala was a teammate of Shane back in the day, 97 through 2001 back, back there. And I'm sure you have a couple stories that you might be able to share and some that you might not. But anyway, Shane, let's start with you real quick. Say hello to the fellas and uh, tell, tell us about your last four months real quickly before I introduce the other guys. How's it been going for you and your family? No, thank you, Coach. Well, thanks for everyone for getting on and uh, really an exciting event where we get to update the program and just kind of, you know, have some banter back and forth here to where we can uh, get to know each other a little bit better. Um, Coach, what we did was we just finished spring ball on Saturday. Uh, we had 15 practices. Great. From day one to day 15, uh, the team really improved. Uh, you know, what I would say is the best thing about this team is their coachable uh, spirit. And they're willing to just take on anything that we've given them so far. And so uh, really encouraged about the guys on our team, their attitudes, uh, just the character of them, you know, and. They, they allow us to coach them hard right now. And so it's extremely encouraging and really fun to work with. Um, so go ahead, coach. So, excuse me. Some of the guys were talking about numbers on your football team. What did you say? You 50 or 60 guys right now? And yeah, we're, we're right around, we're right around 60 right now for spring ball. Yep. And, you know, I think what happens is uh, in a transition, uh, there's some guys that uh, end up fall off a little bit and some guys, uh, you know, they come on board and stay on board and then they figure out maybe this isn't the direction that they want to go in. And uh, sometimes we have to make those decisions, too. And so uh, right now there's just a natural attrition that's taken place, but it's really good because 
Uh, we're going to reload with some guys going into the fall, and we're expecting to get the roster back up to 105. Okay. Well, listen, I'm going to let you go for now for a few minutes, but we have a lot of guys from my era on this webinar just waiting to jump on here with some questions, I'm sure, and there's some guys from your, your, your era, too, that are watching right now and going to participate. But let me, let me introduce the other guys real quick, okay, Shane, and we'll get right back to you. The athletic director. Now, when Rick Conley in, you know, first began the hockey program, in, at Northern Michigan in 1976. That's when we were playing there. That's when we were we were uh, in full swing. We, you know, we had won the championship, and then all of a sudden, boom! Here comes hockey, and you recruit. I don't know, 35 freshmen, and and we all know the kind of program that Rick developed at Northern Michigan. Frozen Fours and national champions in '91, um, and then went on to Michigan State, won another national champ. Not too many guys in this world have won. Uh, hockey national championships at two different schools, only two other guys. All right. So Rick Conley is an excellent coach and guys, I will tell you getting to know Rick. Um, he's an excellent athletic director too. This is his second stint and uh, believe me, he's all in and, and Rick, I just, I just want to welcome you into this webinar and let the fellas know um, your thoughts about your view of the football program right now, as it stands and where it's headed. Okay, thanks, Steve. Well, first of all, you know, I want to thank Kyle Fleischman. I think, you know, he did everything he possibly could to make this program successful. And changes are tough. They're especially tough in football with the, the staff and the amount of people involved. But, you know, when, when that happened, you know, we started this process, my whole approach was, it, I, got, I had to find out what, what was missing in the program to give the new coach a fair chance to come in here and win. You know, and we're in a league right now where Ferris and Grand Valley, you know, have really taken over Division II football. So that's what we're chasing. So when we get into the names, I want to put a committee together. You know, it's an advisory committee, but I wanted input from people who played here. And so I tried to get somebody from each decade, you know, so that there was representation of the really good years in the late 70s and early 80s and people who played through tough times. You know, and just get a different perspective because throughout the whole process, I don't think I asked Shane or anybody once what their offensive philosophy was. I wanted to hire the person who I thought could come in here and manage a football program because you had a hundred and some kids. And I think it's organization and management that leads to success. We all know that Shane was the top candidate in the previous stage. Uh, I immediately had Jason Wender make contact to see would he be interested again and his credit he and jenna flew up here on their own dollar prior to the process starting and i knew when we sat down and talked for an hour that this was the guy who could come in here and help to bring this program back but it was a fair process we considered multiple people we had great input and i right and shane will tell you and i'll let him talk about what's happened since he got here but uh, you know Everybody's really good at Northern in increasing support. Now, the unfortunate part for outgoing coaches as opposed to incoming coaches, there's always more to work with when somebody new comes in. So Northern's been great in improving things and creating a new life to help us get more success. But part of that is what Kyle accomplished when he was here. Part of it now will be Shane. Moving forward, the judgment will come, as we all know with coaches, in wins and losses. So. I think he's going to do a great job. Thanks, Rick. And if anybody has any questions for Rick, fire them off later on. I have one real quick. Our new president, will he be on board with football? He's dynamic, Steve. He's dynamic. He was a track athlete, Division One track athlete. He, he made a statement to me when he came in. I want football to be successful. So every time I've gone to him, whether it be the locker room project, the weight room that we're redoing for football, different hirings, you know, he's, he's right there. Yes, yes, yes. So we couldn't have a better person in charge than he is. Thanks, Rick. Uh, stay close, okay? Yeah. Uh, let me introduce this other box right here, this other talking head um, who happened to be a teammate of Shane Richardson, Robert Sala, back 97 to 2001. I'm sure he's got all kinds of things to talk about on that recruiting trip and everything. Else. What, Shane, you were the host? But you know what? You know what I really respect about Robert Sala? Not just because he's an NFL coach, all right? But I love 
his journey. I love the process where he what what he took to get to this point from being an assistant at several different colleges, whether it's Central Michigan or Michigan State or Georgia, with, with uh, quality control coaching in the NFL. That's how you get your feet wet. That's how you learn how to flip burgers before you own the McDonald's. And he did that at several different places. And he moved up to linebacker. And he moved up to defensive coordinator. And he learned the right things. So when he got this job, he was ready. And I really admired that. And uh, some guys think there's shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. And Robert Sala did things the right way. And he's in his third year now with the New York Jets. And his team is improving every single season. He's sitting at home right now, guys. And if you want to really look behind his shiny head, you can see all these helmets right there. You got Northern, you got Central, you got Michigan State. See a Jet. Wait a minute. Is that Aaron Rodgers behind you? Is that Aaron <laughs> back there? That's your house to Robert. All right. But hey. Tell us why this guy, Shane Richardson, who you know very well, is the right guy for this job and why an, an, an NMU alumnus should be the coach there right now. You know, I just, um, you know, even when we were back as teammates way back in college, you know, uh, and I haven't coached with Shane, but I just know the person he is. And the when we were playing, he was always front and center, the leader of every drill, the the, the guy with impeccable work ethic, always trying to find ways to get better, to to push the envelope of uh, of what was required to kind of go over, just go over, over above and beyond of what was required. And, uh, you know, I've always had this saying, you know, um, not saying, but I give this analogy with Shane and why I think it's so cool that he's the uh, uh, new head coach at Northern. It's, you know, you always bring, you know, if you, if you bring someone in to clean your house, they're going to do a good job. You know, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to clean your house. They're going to, they're going to vacuum. They're going to do all that stuff, but nobody is going to clean your house the way you're going to clean your house and get in every single corner and every crevice and make sure that that house is uh, crystal clean or just spotless. And that's kind of the way I look at Shane and, uh, and this whole setup, because not only does he have the unbelievable work ethic, the unbelievable character, but it's also his home. It's where he got his degree. It's where he played football in college. So it's home for him and it's home for all of us. And, uh, and when you entrust somebody with home, you, you want to entrust somebody who's going to take care of it like it's his home. You know, it was uh, your uncle's home. Doc was your uncle, right? Uncle, yep. Doc Sala Doc. played with us, yep. transferred in. You know, yep. we had a lot of transfers, Shane. You had to think about that. <laughs> we had a lot of transfers come on in and help us out. <laughs> right? Um, but, but Doc was one of those guys. Do you stay in touch with him? Absolutely. Mike Berry, Alex Misselmanny, all three of them. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's the Dearborn Fortune crew, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so listen, uh, for everybody that's watching right now, we appreciate Robert Sala being on with us because right now they're going through draft preparation. You know, he sits there and listens to the reports on every kid in the world that's uh, that's potentially a draft choice and a free agent. And I know I know your time is very valuable right now. So any insight you can give us who you're going to pick on number 13, because we're all going to be watching with interest. Um, and are you going to get that deal done with Aaron Rodgers? All right, have at it. <laughs> well, we're going to get a heck of a player at 13. That's for damn sure. And, uh, you know, I've, uh, I'll let Joe handle the whole uh, Aaron Rodgers thing. <laughs> Sorry for the cop out. <laughs> That's such a cookie cutter answer, man. So listen, if you guys want to ask him a question later on, go ahead and type it in over on that Q&A section over there. But let's get back. Thanks, guys. Rick and, and uh, Robert, thanks for joining us. And uh, um, <clears throat> let's go back to Shane here. Shane, you've been around the block a little bit. You got some good experience and you too started, uh, you know, in high school at Iron Mountain when you did your student teaching and then, and then at NMU as linebackers and, and in Jamestown and North Dakota State and U, UNC Pembroke. So you, you climbed the ladder and you learned along the way, different programs. What in your estimation now, um, uh, does Northern Michigan need to get back to where let's let's not talk about the national championship right and let's talk about the, getting back in the state of Michigan you got Michigan Tech and Rick Conley mentioned Ferris and and Grand Valley we got to catch up and surpass those guys how do we do that coach I think what it starts with is and it's part of why we're having this tonight it, it's getting everyone on the same page and it's it's being able to see one vision for what NMU football can look like. It's being able to 
speak the same language, pour the same energy into uh, where we're going and what we want to accomplish. Everyone wants to win. That's a, that's a very simple concept. And yet what it takes to win is to be able to galvanize every entity to be on board with that. And you've already mentioned it. Um, President, uh, you know, Tessman here, he's on uh, the call actually, and he's been fantastic. Uh, Coach Conley has been fantastic. Uh, and then tonight, being able to get our alumni back involved. And, I'm, you know, I've, I've, I've been in touch with a lot of guys since I've been on campus here the last three months. They have been great. Guys stopping by, texting, emailing. And I think that's just what it's going to take is all of our energy being poured into uh, really the train going in, in one direction here. And so I think a big theme of ours in the program is our togetherness. And we call it We Us Are. It's our mission statement. Uh, we go over it with our players. It's one team, one unit, one family. And no one's bigger than the team. And I think if we all have an unselfishness to be able to believe in that and see it that way and pour the energy and everything that we have to give towards NMU being successful, uh, we can get back to a competitive nature. You mentioned Dr. Tessman. I'm looking for it. You said he's on the call. How you doing, Dr. Tessman? I thought, I thought I saw a note trying to see you when we get there. We are all looking forward to seeing you. Um, yeah, we've heard great things. Talk about the recruits coming in. You know, you mentioned the 60 kids that are working hard and you love their at, their attitude and, and uh, their willingness to work. Talk about your recruiting class and who excites you coming in and who can make a difference. Well, we were able to uh, salvage about 12 guys here uh, getting in late. Uh, we, we got here the first week of January, boots on the ground and signing day was the first week of February. And so we had 12 guys. Uh, here's the great thing about those guys, they, uh, they, some of those guys were in the mix uh, already before we got here. Some of them were not. And they, they made the decision to understand what this transition is going to look like. And they have chosen Northern Michigan. So their commitment level is what's really exciting. Uh, you know, we're, I think I would start out uh, probably, you know, talking about any team uh, with starting with quarterback. And we've got uh, Aiden Horde coming in, who is the son of a former alumni that I played with, Matt Ward. And so uh, Aiden is going to be a great addition to what we want at quarterback. He's smart. He's big. He can throw the ball. He can run. He comes from a great family. And, uh, you know, I think he, at any level, Coach, you know this, uh, you have to have a great quarterback to be able to uh, build a program. Uh, and I think we're going to be really strong at quarterback. Um you know, from there, we, we kind of sprinkled it around. Uh, we, we got a really good player in uh, Jack Sertel that'll be coming in at linebacker uh, from Bigfoot High School. And uh, he's going to be a kid that uh, is going to have a chance to play right away. He's got the frame. He's got uh, just a lot of the things on film that you'd look for and probably was getting recruited from some bigger schools and uh, just showed his loyalty to Northern Michigan and was coming here. So, um of course, I can't go through everybody, but, uh, you know, there's, there's those kids all in that class. Uh, they've just shown a great commitment to stay on board with Northern Michigan. They're going to be great additions. Now, I'm going to go back to kind of the joke you made with the transfers. We've got six transfers on campus right now that are watching this call in the other room. Um, you know, so we're going to do a good job with the transfer portal, too. Uh, I know a lot of people have mixed feelings on that. And, you know, I think it's a necessary evil in today's world of college football. So you have to take advantage of it. You have to be able to protect it. You have to build great team culture so that uh, you're not necessarily a victim of it. And so, um, you know, we're going to def definitely add some pieces, but when it all comes down to it, those guys are going to be great fits for Northern Michigan. We're going to do our homework and know who they are as well. And uh, we're going to bring in the right guys and then help us win and get there. Okay. I've got one question before we start reading some questions from the fellas that are watching, um, because there are guys from all over the country, literally, literally watching this right now, all over the country. And we can't recruit the Alaska, but talk about your recruiting areas, where you're going to hit hard and how we can help recruiting. Sure. We, we're going to draw a, a circle from Marquette, Michigan, over to Minneapolis, down to Chicago, over to Detroit, and then back up to the state of Michigan. 
Uh, and obviously the upper peninsula is the closest to us. And so we're gonna try to hit everything in that six, six and a half hour radius and make sure that we do a really, really good job with that. Now, of course, there's other pockets that we might have connections to and, and guys might reach out to us with, and we'll certainly entertain that and make sure that they're gonna be the right fits as well. Uh, but I think the best way for, uh, you know, guys out there on the call listening right now, um, you know, send an email, uh, get in touch with us. Uh, we actually are starting a recruiting cycle for the class of 24 starting Monday. And so we're in the beginning of uh, these, these next year's seniors coming up. Uh, so we're, we're kind of just kicking that off here uh, going into Monday. And we're excited to just kind of start getting names of guys. And we're going to have a junior day coming up here in May. And we'll have camps in uh, June. Uh, so it'll be exciting to kind of kick off this cycle, but uh, don't hesitate to reach out at all. All of our emails in terms of our coaching staff are up on the website. Um, you know, if you if you can get your hands on my cell phone number, don't hesitate to reach out because I've not changed it ever since I first got a cell phone back when I was a junior here at Northern. Uh, so that's, you know, go ahead and reach out, text, call, whatever you need to do. Uh, we are extremely uh, open to making sure that we entertain uh, what those could look like. Okay. So Kylie, I know you have a bunch of questions. Why don't you go ahead and, and uh, fire some off, okay, from the guys? All right. Um, starting off, this question is for Shane. Todd Drake, class of 2011, would like to know, when you think about classroom, community, and on-the-field performance, what are the steps in creating the ideal culture, and how much of a challenge is it to continue a winning culture in those areas. Yeah, great, Todd, thanks so much. Um, so I think, you know, what it does is it, it, it starts with a vision. Uh, and what we do is we talk about a vision of being premier. And that's really being able to separate ourselves from the status quo, being able to uh, be the best in everything that we do. And so it becomes a lifestyle. It doesn't become just a sexualized thing, you know, where we have to separate it. Uh, we want to be the very best in every single thing that we do and how we represent ourselves. So whether you're in the weight room, whether you're in the classroom, whether you're on the practice field, whether you're, uh, you know, at the beer lane, uh, whatever it is, we want to be the very best in what we're doing, how we're treating people, what our work ethic looks like, what our focus is on, and, you know, it's, it's a vision. It's a vision of us being premier. And that's what we talk about as a team. And I think to sustain that, you've got to be able to continue to believe in your vision. It can't, it can't shift and the standard cannot drop. And you have to make sure that people understand what it looks like and the successes that come along with that so they can be inspired to be that. Good. Kylie, go ahead, let her rip. All right. Um, I think you touched mostly, we've had a few retention questions about, um, you know, the uh, back in the 70s and 80s, there was really a point of difference when it came to recruiting. I think you touched on that, but if you want to say anything else about that. But then a follow-up question that came through was, so we recruit people here, but how do we get them to stay here? Um, so do you, have, do you have a plan to get them to stay for the, you know, the entire time that they are um, in college? Sure. Well, I think what it is, is uh, you, you have to communicate what the plan looks like in terms of when you recruit them. Um, everyone wants overnight success. Everyone wants to feel good right away. And yet uh, anyone that has gone through college football, it's extremely difficult. There takes great patience. It takes perseverance. It takes a grittiness to work through it. And I think one of the great things we have here, and honestly, coming back here 22 years later, uh, we've been able to see how this town of Marquette has changed and the great things that have uh, moved in here and all the activities that are going on here. Uh, you've got to get people to see what a great community and all the fun things that can go on here are. And, um, you know, here's the deal. And I tell recruits this all the time. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to live here the rest of your life. Okay. But if you want a great experience for the next four or five years, or how many ever years you're here in terms of maybe being a transfer and here for one or two, uh, it can be a great experience and you can do some things that maybe you don't get a chance to do anywhere else in the world. And so, um, I think being able to create the vision of the all around experience is really important. And I think you just have to continue to work on your culture daily. 
Uh, if you have a strong culture, everyone wants to be included. Everyone wants to be a part of something special. And if you can continue to work on that message and do things that are going to create an excitement and energy behind that, that's, that's how you get people to stay. Allie? Awesome. Um, next question is for Rick. Uh, Rick, how um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, we have we have a lot of athletic teams. This question is from Ron Stump. We have a lot of athletic teams here at NMU, and he would like to know how NMU affords to um, fund so many programs and how you split your focus that way. It's hard. When I was AD before, I think we had 11 sports. We now have 20. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the growth. I think came with as enrollment dipped, they added sports to create and enhance enrollment. So once you get them here, now you have to have enough money uh, to deal with them. You know, we have an ongoing issue. We have this great dome and the turf, and we have some teams that want the turf and some teams that want the floor. So balancing practice times and opportunities, and you know, and I guess what I've done budget wise, and I. I showed this to the football committee in the process is, is I've done direct comparisons with other budgets in the league. So I don't want anybody to come back and say, well, we can't compete with so-and-so because they do this and we don't do that. And, and I'm confident that we're at the proper funding level. Now we have to sell the location. The previous question about keeping them, and that's real. That, that's getting them here is a challenge. Like Steve asked about recruiting. Well, a big part of the search process was we have to get our feet back into Wisconsin. We, we've lost Wisconsin. I, I had that feedback repeatedly. So budgets are always an issue. Uh, facilities are an issue. Our, our facilities are aging. We've made changes already. We're moving basketball out of a hockey rink and creating a new environment. You know, for them, we're improving things for football and, and the physical part of things. So I don't like no's. I can deal with no's from people above me. But I'd rather find solutions. And so I'm only back here for a period of time. But in that time that I'm here, you know, I want to leave with everybody feeling that they've been treated fairly and that things are improving. So, you know, that's the goal I have. Awesome. This is for Coach Salah John, from John Truitt. How important is NMU to you as part of your backstory and your legacy? Kind of where it all began. Um. It's always important because it's part of your past, right? And you're just trying to, you know, I'm still obviously very connected to it. Uh, really excited that Shane's here and uh, um, to, to draw us all. I think we're all on here. A lot of see a lot of former teammates on uh, on this call. And so uh, his presence is drawing us all a little bit closer and just having somebody so close to home. But, um, you know, it's uh, I think anything that you've ever had that you've ever done in your past is always a connection, no matter how small or big it is because uh, it's a part of your journey and uh, obviously northern Michigan was an unbelievable four years of my life and uh, I've made tremendous connections that I still hold today. Robert let me jump in real quick because um, you stayed you know you're a downstate guy and you stayed up there at northern I don't know if you like snow or not but <laughs> you gotta you gotta tell us about because Shane was a year ahead of you and Shane was your host and you were on a recruiting trip from Forts in high school so let's talk about how that went. How did they land Robert Sala to come to Northern? Um, you know what? I uh, the, the recruiting part was easy. Obviously, my Uncle Doc played there, Mike Berry, Alex Misselman. So there was a little bit of a connection. But I, I fell in love with the whole scene, you know, uh, uh, going up there in the, the Dome. And uh, uh, Shane, obviously, being my host, did a hell of a lot better job than he gives himself credit for. But, um, you know, I just... I, I, I knew I knew I wanted to get away. You know, I didn't want to stick around Detroit. I wanted to get away and just kind of explore things. And um, so it was kind of natural for me to get away. But uh, uh, so for me, it was kind of easy, you know, because I also, you know, was, uh, like like a lot of guys on this call, there was Grand Valley, Saginaw. There was a lot of schools that we had to pass a long way uh, to get to Northern. But just what what Northern was offering and uh, just the overall scene for me is what connected. So do you guys have it arranged during your bye week this fall where you show up at a Northern game and dial up a couple of blitzes for Shane? <laughs> I don't know if my wife and kids will have that one. <laughs> Get away from them. That'll be, a, that's a task, but Bring I'll zoom in. Yeah. I'll zoom in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Zoom. Get that zoom working. Okay. But Rick, real quick, I'm going to go back to you because you, you made some changes this 
year with the football program, an additional hire, you know, some of those kinds of things. Talk about, talk about those kinds of things that you felt would be beneficial for our program to improve. Well, I, I think the challenge, especially for Division Two, I mean, you remember your days when there were 65 scholarships and Division Two changed to 36. So, you know, you spread money, you got to bring in 100 kids and, you know, and it's just, the, one, the question, first of all, was can you win? Can we win again here? Everybody wants it. Everybody wants the same thing. Shane, Kyle, every, uh, every alum that possibly is. But, and Kyle was 100% right. There were deficiencies. You know, and if you didn't plug those holes, then you're not given a fair chance to the next coach to come in and, and try and get it done. And, and what deficiencies Shane's are you out, talking about, Rick? What deficiencies? Well, number one, dollars, uh, staff. You know, like every coach, every football coach wants 40 coaches. Every football chain drives me crazy because he wants eight meeting rooms every day. Eight, you know, and I have this big open air dome. <laughs> you know, we've gone around and moved equipment and moved people. And so he's going to get his eight meeting rooms. So I need him to tell me what does he need? What does it take? And then my job is to find it. So that's the process that we're in right now. All right. Kylie, what do you have? What else do you have? Rick Pop would like to know. Oh, geez, Rick Pop. Okay. <laughs> you were waiting, right? Um, he would like to know what you need from the football alumni specifically. I know we will be talking towards the end of this program about the football locker room project, but um, in addition, what sorts of things are you looking for from football alumni to help support as the program moves forward? I suppose that could be for Shane or Rick. Coach County, you want to go ahead? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's involvement. I think it's support. I think it's, I think sometimes as simple as just send a text, stop in and say hi. And then there, there's always going to be requests for money. I think the hard thing is, you know, if every time you contact somebody, you're asking for a dollar. But there are realistic things. You know, we're doing, we're doing the lock. It needs a facelift. It needs new. So I, I got uh, Gavin to, to agree to front the money but we have to pay that money back. I then got him to approve redoing another area that used to be for the uh, National Training Center weightlifters into a football room properly equipped, but Northern's doing that. You know, so a director of football ops, I talked to Steve many times that we've never had here. Uh, we're gonna do a part-time thing for a year and try to move that to a full-time in a year. Now we've added a full-time assistant. So we have part-time assistants and so, it just takes it takes so many people to run a program and as, as specific as they are. I've been thrilled, Steve. I've gone out and watched practice in the morning. They're here every morning. I watch these kids get beat up and beat down, but continue to battle. I saw the enthusiasm grow uh, and the spirit builds. And, and I've talked to so many of these kids through this process and uh, they buy in. And if, they, if present kids buy in, everybody that comes in for a visit, begins the buy-in. So I, I think it's the buy-in part and alums are a major part. I've seen a couple of teams come across the screen. There's a player in the plane. There's a player in Arizona. Well, I guarantee you somebody from the staff will make contact while we can we reestablish and rebuild our ties. And that requires constant contact in Wisconsin and Michigan. If you branch out past that, fine. But I think your core has to be near home. Shane, what has to be done between now and September when we kick it off um, in terms of team development? Yeah, I think, uh, well, number one, we've got to get our roster to 105 so that we can make sure we know who we're working with. And you have enough room for 105 bodies, huh? 105 bodies. Uh, you know, Co Coach Conley makes these jokes, and yet he is serious, right? I think the number is nine, and it's not eight, but we'll talk about that more tomorrow, uh, Coach Conley. But, uh, <laughs> no, he, he's right. I mean, it takes a lot of people. It takes a lot of resources. And, um, you know, Coach was generous enough to be able to move our roster limit to 105. You know, I, we're, we're pushing it as high as we can get it because the game of football needs more bodies all the time. Uh, you're beating on each other. And, of course, there's uh, injuries that take place and everything like that. But uh, just from a team development, Coach, we have two more weeks uh, left of being able to conduct mandatory activities and 
Uh, we're going to use that well. Um, Friday, and I know some of the players are on. Uh, I shouldn't give this away completely, but uh, we're going to have some fun activities Friday morning. Uh, they think we're actually going to go on a really hard running conditioning session, but uh, we're going to do some team building, some team bonding, and making sure that guys understand that you know we can work hard, we can sweat, we can do a lot of things uh, with you know grinding them up, but uh, you got to be able to build the togetherness. You got to be able to build the relational side and the fun aspect of it, and it's just part of the culture. It's part of how we do things. It's part of what's going to. Uh, help our relational concept uh, trust each other more and more all the time. And so uh, coach just said it, and I've told the team this, uh, the guys that are here right now are the foundation of the culture. And uh, anyone that comes in has to be good for the culture. They have to add to it. And these guys that are here right now are going to be the uh, nucleus of that. And they're going to be kind of the uh, ones that are holding each other accountable for that. So uh, we're looking to continue to add to that and make sure that we just get it the best we can in terms of the positivity and the energy and the togetherness. You mentioned a couple more weeks of uh, organized team activities with strength and conditioning and whatnot. What do you have planned in the summer? You're going to have most of your kids around taking summer school classes, working out with you. Uh, do most of the kids stay? Highly encouraging that, yes. Um, that July is going to be a critical month for us. Uh, typically, May, the month of May, they will be able to kind of do what they need to do. A lot more will come back in June and then July will be really critical for a lot of them to be here. And so uh, a lot of them are making plans to be here in July, credit to them. And uh, you know, you won't know until they actually show up, but looking forward to having a, a large part of the ones that are actually here right now coming back with us in July and we'll have on campus uh, workouts and uh, it'll be a really good thing. Uh, our strength and conditioning coach has done a fantastic job this spring, Coach Brutomesso, and, um, you know, she'll have them uh, this summer in June and July, and uh, it'll be a really good thing for us. So <clears throat> around the country now the last couple of years, NIL, name, image, and likeness, and the transfer portal have taken college sports by storm. How does how do those two things affect Northern Michigan University, the transfer portal and NIL? Yeah, I think the transfer portal uh, more so than NIL. Um, I, you know, I think what it is, is uh, especially in this transition, right? I mean, kids, if, if they don't like the direction that uh, we're going in, if they don't like the message that we're giving them uh, in terms of the new program here, um, you know, it's easy to just go in the portal and go try to find a different home. And so um, it, it does affect college programs. And that's why it's so hard to build college programs these days is because, Kids have the freedom to do that whenever they want. And, um, you know, there's really no restrictions on that. Um, so you have to you have to really uh, be articulate and creative in the way that you handle that with your team and with the way that you add others from other teams as well. Um, I think with the NIL, uh, we're, we're, we actually are ahead of that. I think as a university, we've actually uh, teamed up with a company that uh, – is organized and has done this professionally with some other teams. And um, we work through uh, a company that can help kids uh, be able to, you know, take advantage of NIL if there's that opportunity. And you know, I think in, in small markets at smaller levels, it's not such a big di distraction per se, but it, it still could be a thing where they could take advantage of it and uh, still be able to work through local businesses or organizations or anything like that. And, um, it, it, it can be a good thing if they are able to keep it in the right context. Rick, Rick, in terms of your involvement, you can't be involved with the NIL, but how do you manage all that if it, if it presents itself with all of your athletes? Well, you know, there is a process. We have paperwork. Uh, everything's got to be recorded. Uh, I think Marquette is what Marquette is. You know, we don't have a lot of corporate or, or big manufacturing and stuff. So I think NILs as they grow will be small. I think we're wide open to it. We encourage it. We, you know, whenever it comes to us, we're going to approve it as long as proper paperwork is done. I don't think it's going to be a swing factor, though, with any of our sports. I, I can see where the transfer portal could be huge. I mean, when just when we played, you know, Robert mentioned, you know, his his guys from Fortson down there. We had guys transferring from Central and from Michigan State. Right. Regal came from Michigan State, right? Mike Barrett. Um, I can see where those 
guys that I don't know, maybe don't play much or a little disenchanted down at those programs would like to come and start. Boom, let's play. You know, um, how do you how do you how do you stay on top of that? Is that is there a, is there a clean way of doing that where you find out who might be uh, willing to do that next year kind of thing? I think what you do is you recruit them uh, in a way that you would a high school guy and you go through your process, you make sure you get to know them, you, you really ask the hard questions, you present what your expectations are going to be. And uh, if you're authentic throughout that process, uh, those guys are going to either be attracted to it or not attracted to it. And it usually kind of takes care of itself in a lot of ways if you do it the right way. Um, I think what happens when you make mistakes, you take shortcuts and you're not thorough and you start looking at the school that they're coming from and you start to see the eye candy of it and you really don't do a good job of uh, kind of going through the process that you need to, to be thorough with it. And uh, we're very, we're very, uh, you know, we try to just be as thorough as we can and try to make sure we know the person that we're getting, uh, make sure they know our expectations and dive into that as deep as we can before we really make that decision. Okay. Kylie, you got some more questions? I do. David Holmes would like to know, of course, winning brings people into the stands. What plans do you have with your team or the university to build excitement around the program to bring fans to the Superior Dome? I think it would be fun to hear from, um, obviously from Rick and Shane from that perspective, but also Robert as well, if you have any thoughts on how to amp up the excitement around the program now that we have a um, we have Shane at the helm. Yeah, I can go first, you know, on this, and it's a challenge. This dome is a challenge. You know, number one, you have, you've got to be successful, you know, and then we have to schedule. I want to try and play a few night games. We're going to play Tech at night next year. I think that will. We have to improve the video board system. Everybody laughs at me, but I'd love to put a center hung scoreboard or a big one in the dome. Uh, that would enhance the sound system and, you know, get some music going in there and try to, you know, we, we drop pretty well on one side. We still have a challenge on the student body side because, you know, football games are played on a Saturday in the fall. If the weather is good, you know, it's tough to get them in the building. So you have to entice them and make it fun for them to be there. So it's a topic that we are talking about constantly, trying to increase attendance while we kind of reload and rebuild. Yeah, I think uh, to piggyback on that, uh, you have to win. <laughs> you have to create uh, the excitement for people feeling good about going to a competitive game and having success. So we've got to be able to do that. That's obviously going to be an ongoing process. But then I think, you know, to give you an example, this past Saturday, what we did was we got the youth involved. And if you can see on our Twitter, um, you know, we had a couple youngsters come out of the stands and we put them out there at running back. And it was the start of the second quarter. It was the start of the fourth quarter. And, you know, we lined them up for a real play and had them run the ball and our team chased them downfield and just created a, an excitement for them. And, you know, the more kids you get involved, uh, the parents are going to come. And, um, you know, I guarantee you that parents will follow their kids, you know, and it's a great way to be able to generate some excitement in that way, too. And so um, I think just being able to continue to reach out to the community and connect them. Uh, I think that's a really important piece to being able to uh, build our fan base as well. Yeah, they they hit the nail on the head. It's well, we, we have the same. Oh, sorry about that. We have the same discussions and uh, uh, with the NFL, it's it comes down to winning. You win football games, they're going to want to come and watch you play. But uh, but Shane just hit it. You know, reaching out to the community is always is always best. Whether you're running football camps, local camps, uh, going to local high schools, and just trying to touch the community and try to make it as personal uh, as possible. Because when when you have a personal connection, you can build a personal connection with the community. Like you said, all those young kids. Um, parent, parents are going to go where their kids want to go, especially on a Saturday, uh, to fill the void of time. Uh, I know I do, but, um, uh, so for sure winning and, uh, connecting with the community is always, uh, the easiest way to get our, the, the, the first place to start. Yeah. You, not everybody has a fireman Ed, you know, like you do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rick, I think I, I, Saturday night might be fun, you know? I mean, well, I play the game and everybody goes to the North End or whatever they do. But um, that might be that, <laughs> might be that might be a lot of fun. <laughs> Kylie, what else do you have? 
Um, how are we going to solve the discipline on the field? We've lost a lot of games because we can't seem to prevent penalties. What's the strategy to prevent these losses of downs and yards to get the Ws? Accountability. You have to hold people accountable for what they don't do right. <laughs> you know, uh, it's a simple concept, not easy. And yet uh, we've really tried to focus on having great accountability this spring. Um, it, we've, we've addressed penalties. We've addressed decision-making. Um, we address uh, details. And I think if you're letting details slide, if you're letting practice habits slide, that's how you're going to play in the game on Saturday. And we have a quote that we typically have in almost all of our team meetings. Uh, how you do anything is how you're going to do everything. And uh, if you're going to practice the way uh, of undisciplined habits, that's what you're going to do on Saturday. And you got to be able to have a keen eye as a coach to address those things. And you got to have a system of accountability to make sure they know how important it is to stay on track with those things. I, I, Kylie, you got another one? I do. From James Gleason, who says he's an old teammate of yours. Um, he and others would also like to know, I know we've talked about recruiting, but um, how, what is being done specifically to recruit here in the UP, specifically in this area in Marquette and the UP overall? I love this question because I am recruiting the UP this spring, personally. I will be at all 37 schools starting Monday. I don't know if that's a good enough uh, answer. You guys gonna, hey, you gonna show, show, you gonna do a clinic or anything for the coaches in the UP? Or no, we've, got a, we've got a UP uh, head uh, high school coaches clinic next Friday. I'll be speaking at that. Um, Where is that? It's over in Escanaba. Yeah, and, God, they're uh, still having that. Yep. And so that'll be a good event. Uh, all high school coaches are uh, invited to attend that. And, no, I mean, I'm, I'll be in every high school uh, this spring, so I'm looking forward to getting out and seeing all those coaches personally and obviously getting the names of all their guys that they're going to recommend. And then, of course, we're going to have camps this summer. Uh, we'll have a camp here on campus, and um, we're going to try to get as many guys uh, to be able to come to that as possible. Anybody, ninth through 12th graders, uh, it'll be a high school one-day camp that we have on uh, June 29th. It's a Thursday. Well, that Escanaba camp, they've been doing that forever, right? Is Dan Flynn? Yeah, Coach Flynn is still in charge of that. That's right. 45 years ago, Buck was supposed to go do that. And he goes, Mariota, you're doing it for me. And I had to go do a clinic and I didn't know how to do a clinic. It was my first year coaching and he made me do it. Yeah, 45 years ago. Now here you are. Let's go. Teach him something, will you? Okay. <laughs> um, a couple of questions about... Um, for kids who want to walk onto your program, what do you expect from them to possibly get a spot on your team? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we've had a couple guys uh, walk on here uh, from this past spring. I think it's, it's very simple. It's, you know, they got to have a little bit of uh, an athletic ability to be able to add to the mix. Um, you can't just take anybody, but even more important than that, uh, their effort that they show, uh, their attitude, their ability to be coachable, and and then are we going to be able to depend on them? And if they can show those four things, it uh, really gives them an opportunity to be successful. They can improve. They can get better. Um, you know, it's regardless of their ability and their talent level. Uh, if they have those four, those are our four team standards that we hold everybody to, um, they, they can get better and they can work into a role. And um, we look for those four characteristics. And so uh, we'll have a tryout. Um, every really every semester and we'll have another one coming up this fall and so kids that are on campus or maybe high school kids that um you know are coming to school here and, and get to get a chance in the recruiting process um they'll have a chance to come out and try out and uh, we'll be looking for those things Hi. a question about um nfl prospect jake witt um First of all, there's, this is kind of threefold because we have a few people asking this question. But first of all, can we leverage that kind of national coverage? Um, it was written up in New York Times and The Athletic re regarding um, him being a prospect. Can we re leverage that kind of national coverage to profile the program and help recruit higher levels of talent? And then also someone would like to know if, um, Robert, if you scouted enemy alumni and UP native Jake Witt at all. And then Steve, if you're familiar with him and what your thoughts are, um, on if and where he will be drafted. 
start with you, Shane, potentially. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I talked I talked to Jake today, actually. Um, so yeah, he uh, he here's what I would say is I've been in contact with probably half of the teams in the league, and you know, if you're good enough, they'll find you, right? And and he's obviously a great prospect that's put up great numbers, and so uh, there's a lot of interest that he's uh, generated and. Um, I talked to our team, you know, in terms of, Hey, you know, we have, we have NFL, uh, teams that are calling and emailing and potentially coming through here. And uh, yeah, it, it's definitely something we can leverage. I think there's been some stories and things out there on social media. And, uh, I think we just got to continue to, uh, put the brand out there. And obviously he's done a great job to put himself in a position for, uh, this, April, May, uh, you know, to be able to see what's going to happen with him. And, um, you know, it's, it's a tribute to him coming to Northern Michigan and obviously moving forward, you know, to see what type of prospects we can get here uh, that can be excited about that, that opportunity. You know, in the draft and Robert's going through this right now, you know, you start with measurables. That's why we have a combine, right? We get height, weight, and speed, and bench, and cone drills, and all that sort of thing. And then, of course, there's film galore to watch. The level of competition that you watch Jake with, with is different than watching the SEC. But, um, you know, and, and then you talk about uh, the intangible kind of qualities that one has. Um, the greatest story ever told is Tom Brady was the worst combine quarterback in the history of the combine. And of course he's the greatest quarterback. So it's not all about measurables, right? But it's a starting place. Jake Witt has got some measurables. Now he's tall and he's over 300 pounds and he can run like a deer. And so some of those things are a great place to start. And, and I don't know Jake personally, but I've had a chance to see his numbers. He didn't get invited to the combine. Kurt Warner didn't get invited to the combine either. Sometimes they fall through the cracks too. So you just got to find a, a place that'll give you a shot. I'm hoping the New York Jets give him a shot, get him in the camp, whether it gets drafted or not on the third day, that's up to the pro teams. Um, but signing as a free agent, there's nothing wrong with that either. Because then you can kind of pick the team that you, you feel you might have the best chance at. Now, and now, Robert, are we going to 16 practice squad guys? Are we stay in there? Yeah, it's, it's been 16 since, uh, yeah, they kept since COVID. So, yeah. so when I was coaching, there was only six. So that's yeah. a lot. That's 300 more jobs in the National Football League, right? So, uh, you know, a kid like that with those measurables uh, is, is going to have a chance to show what he can do. And he's got to get in to a camp and in so many camps here and, and fight it out with the big boys and see exactly how he stacks up. But I'm rooting for the kid. It'd be nice to get a, a guy in the, in the National Football League again. Well, without giving up too many of my uh, too many of our cards and all that stuff, we're definitely keeping an eye on him. Just like Coach said, we're all super excited about. It. Obviously, didn't get invited to the combine, but uh, he's been he's he's popped up in some pro days and uh, um, really really good measurables and all that stuff. So he's we're keeping an eye on him and uh, and going through our entire process. But uh, not to say where we uh, haven't graded or anything and put that out there, but uh, we we definitely have an eye on him. Exciting too because it's been a while since Northern's had a guy that's been. Uh, uh, worthy of of anything uh, uh, remotely close to the to an NFL roster. Kylie, Shane, can you talk a little bit about your assistant coaches? Yes, we have six full time assistants on staff currently. Um, hired the uh, all of those guys here uh, starting in January and completed that process a few weeks back. Um, Billy Linquist is our uh, associate head coach, our offense coordinator, quarterbacks coach. Uh, he and I have been together for the last nine years. Uh, he's very familiar with the program and how we do things and uh, couldn't trust the guy more to be on the offensive side of the ball and manage that uh, side. Um, Jeff Fantuzzi also came with me from the previous place I was at. Uh, he coaches our offensive line. He's also our recruiting coordinator. Uh, Mike Dufresne is our uh, defense coordinator, linebackers coach. Uh, was the head coach at Finlandia. He's from Wisconsin and um, knows the UP well, knows Wisconsin well, and uh, has head coaching experience, which is very valuable in uh, helping to coach a position and a side of the ball. Uh, Mike Kaiser is our defensive line coach. Uh, he is from lower Michigan, the Detroit area, and has coached Division II football. We actually coached against each other the last couple of years. Uh, has been a great addition for our defensive line. Um, Ezekiel Combs is our defensive backs coach, um, originally from Atlanta, and uh, 
made a choice to come up to Lakeland College and play and, and go to school there. Uh, went through his whole college experience there and then uh, decided to stay in the Midwest. Went out to Nebraska to coach and then back to St. Norbert's to coach. And we got him up here this spring and I uh, was going to do a fantastic job with our defensive backs. And then uh, DeAndre Riddick, uh, he's from Kentucky and um, was at Kentucky Wesleyan, the Division II school down there and coaches our receivers. Uh, it's going to do a great job here for us, brings a lot of energy and has uh, just a lot of great thoughts on just what Division II looks like and what it takes to be successful at this level. And, um, you know, we have some part-time guys. The part-time guy we have right now is Adrian Satterstad, and uh, he's from the UP, uh, from Hancock, and, um, you know, has a lot of pride in the UP and certainly is willing to do anything we ask of him. And so um, we're going to hire a couple more part-time guys, and uh, they'll be on board here in the next month or two. And uh, we're going to continue to just get this thing better and better all the time. Awesome. Hey, Kylie, we, maybe we should go to the locker room project and, and those th sort of things that are coming up. Okay. We're kind of running out of time. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Shane, talk about, talk yeah, about yeah. Yeah. I'll talk about the locker room project here. Um, you know, coach Conley mentioned this earlier and just for those that maybe missed this, um, I think this is a compliment to Northern Michigan and Gavin Leach, our uh, CFO, he he decided to make the decision to, you know, front the money for this two hundred and fifty thousand dollar locker room project. And that was before we had any uh, commitments or pledges or, or money in the bank at all for this project. And um, currently we're obviously going to be fundraising for that. But the, we've already started planning. Uh, we have meetings weekly on this and. They're going to start uh, painting ceilings, painting walls. They're going to uh, redo lockers. They're going to add new uh, name plates, uh, the donor tags uh, from when, uh, you know, those of you that have bought lockers, those will all get redone and uh, there'll be a, a nicer tag that'll be on there with your name and uh, whatever you have on there. But um, what, a, what a great idea and vision uh, that Coach Conley had to, to help us out with this. And um, this is all gonna be done before August. And so uh, obviously we're gonna need some help to be able to finance this, but um, you know, we've got it up on our website. You can see some renderings um, and there's obviously uh, the code here that's being flashed on the screen that Kylie just put up. And if you go to that, you'll have a lot more information. Uh, we're looking at selling some lockers. Uh, it's $2,500 for a locker. And then any other donation that you'd like to make could also be up there for a spot of your name uh, on a locker, a locker room board uh, that shows that you've given donation to the locker room project. And so uh, it's really exciting. I, I can't wait to really reveal it to our team and to our players, but it's going to have a whole new makeover and uh, it's going to be a really, really good place to be able to just go in there and, and have the guys call it our home and, it's going to be really exciting. So uh, check out our website or go to the PR code here and uh, the QR code. And, um, you know, you can get a lot more information on that. And so, uh, you know, if you feel led, please help us out with that. It's it's going to be obviously a project that we're going to need some money and some financing on. And um, I think the great thing is it's already started and we've had people that have already committed to doing this. And a lot of people have already reached out with interest on it. And so uh, we appreciate everyone's help on that. How about the golf tournament? We have a golf tournament coming up uh, Saturday, June 24th. That's going to be led by Kurt Albrecht uh, on the 75 team. And um, his email will be available uh, for anybody that's interested in that. But trying to just get anyone uh, from any era, trying to come back to campus, trying to uh, just, you know, unify and get together and hang out and just create some more energy around NMU football and where we're going with this thing. So. Uh, Kurt's done a lot of good work with that, and we'll have a we'll have a good uh, showing here this June for that one. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Kylie, anything else? We yeah, let's, wrap let's wrap it up with one question. I know. I'm apologies. We did not get to all the questions. I know they've been coming in like crazy. Um, but just to close it out, what are the expectations for next season, and what steps are being made to actually meet those expectations? Expectations. We're, we're going to, you know, here's the thing. Um, a lot of people talk about rebuilding. A lot of people talk about, uh, you know, having patience. And while all those things are realistic, you have to keep those in mind. 
as coaches and as players, we want to win right now, you know, and the expectation is that we're going to go into every game uh, and very competitive. And so we're going to do everything possible to make sure that we expedite the process and uh, the expectations that are go in and be able to put ourselves in a position to compete for a GLIAC championship, to compete for uh, being put in our, putting ourselves in con- position to compete for a national championship. And that's not that far away, guys. If you look at uh, what was done here last year, uh, we were very competitive with a lot of teams and teams that made the playoffs. Uh, we were right there in the hunt with them. And, um, you know, it's obviously going to take a lot of hard work, but I think those are realistic goals and those are expectations that we talked about with our team. And we're going to continue to shoot for those. Obviously, you have to have patience. You have to have a, a reality check every now and then. But um, we're going to do it as quickly as we can and make sure we stay competitive uh, on a nonstop basis. All right. Well, Kylie, let me say goodbye. All right. You got anything else for us? Nope. I also just want to say thank you to all of you for joining us and thank you to everybody signing on. Um, I will be sending a follow-up email tomorrow that will have the website if you are interested in learning more about the locker room project. Um, And uh, don't forget to follow us on social media and and keep Mm -hmm. involved. You also can update your information with the alumni office and um, that way whenever we have anything football related coming up, we make sure that we reach out to you. Okay, sounds good. Kylie, Thank great job that. with this. And and uh, Shane, we'll talk. Okay, great job tonight. I, I know guys appreciate you spending time uh, so they can get to know you a little bit better. And uh, we'll we'll uh, get to know you better as time goes on. Thanks. Good job, man. We'll see you at the golf tournament or sometime, okay? Yeah. Thank Coach you, Carly. Everything. Thank you very much, everyone, good. for being on. You're doing a heck of a job. Keep it going. We'll talk soon. And then Robert Sala down there. You have a good draft, okay? Yeah, we'll have- yeah. Yeah, this uh, you're gonna get uh, Aaron Rodgers. You got all Packer fans on this call right now. You know, and <laughs> I'm like I hate that guy right now. But anyway, good luck with the draft. Have a great off season. You got to shut it down for a minute, right? Because uh, going into your third season, I know there's high expectations over there at the JETS Jets, and we're all rooting for you, man. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Really okay? it. All Shane, right, great job, guys. man. Great to have you guys here. Congratulations again, uh, Shane. Awesome. All right, Thanks Shane. All right, go Cats. All right, good good job, everybody. Thanks. See you soon.